Hello everyone and welcome back to the My Football Writer podcast here on the My Football Writer YouTube channel and even the My Football Writer Spotify account if you are listening rather than watching. I'm Freddie Humphrey Wakefield and I am joined by Jack Wright and Will Grant. There's no Henry Miller. We think he's too busy producing Canary Call and trying to process out all of the swear words I would imagine after Norwich City's opening day loss away at Oxford United but Apart from that, how has everyone been since the last podcast? Of course, I wasn't there. I'm back now, but now Henry isn't here. So again, it's we can't have the uh, the awesome foursome. Uh, no, no. Get your mind out of the gutter, people. No, no. I'm just making a very nice passing comment about my friends. But anyway, uh, how have you both been apart from uh, apart from what happened yesterday? Not good at all, mate. That was tragic yesterday, but we'll talk about it later. Um... Yeah, um, I was really looking forward to it as per, but anyone that knows me, I've got an absolutely honking away record. And again, yesterday was another brilliant example of that. Well, apart from Saturday, I've I've been all right. I've polished off the rest of my wedding cake. um, So that's nice. Um, I'm 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 trying to think of like alternative things because at the moment um, I'm just, um, yeah, I can't get past what I watched at 12.30 yesterday. Um, By the way, I I did feature on Radio Norfolk on Friday evening. If anyone's listening, do not listen to that back. Do not listen to it. I I might have made a prediction for the score. Do not clip it, bookmark it, put it on Twitter and slate me. Um, Just, I, I advise you not to, please, please. No. Well, you know what I'm going to do once we finish recording, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be straight in. But anyway, going well, moving on from that. Well, there's nothing else to really to talk about. Of course, I did a live stream myself last night. If you did miss that, it is up on the YouTube channel anyway. The recording and the whatever is saved. And those who uh, watched it at the time and are watching this now, I hope you enjoyed that last night. I hope you continue to enjoy this as we go on as well. But it was bad. It, it was quite bad. Um, luckily, I wasn't able to watch all of it, but uh, I, I was able to find like extended highlights and sort of more breakdowns of the game. So I was able to see a lot more of the action than what originally I had done. Uh, but no, it, it wasn't very fun. It, it wasn't. It wasn't enjoyable whatsoever. But at least we weren't in the crowd. Hey, Jack. At least we didn't go all that way to to watch it. But yeah, that's well, true. That's true. My sofa was very comfortable. Um, you know, the the commentary from Sky was uh, okay. Uh, I mean, who would be so foolish to travel all the way to the Kassam for its three beautiful stands and one beautiful car park? Um, Will, would you like to add anything to this uh, retort? I would love to add something to that. Um, yeah, that was me, unfortunately. Um, where do I even start? Um, and actually, I don't know where to start. Can we all just talk about that team sheet selection? Um, albeit I wasn't the most sober at that time of day, um, I was absolutely flabbergasted to see the team news of Hanley and Duffy as a bat too. Like, in pre-season, we literally saw like at least one ball count option at, at centre-back. And then a, a more of a blocker in Hanley on Duffy, etc. But he played both of them together. Um, I was absolutely shocked, really. Um, guys, what did you think of that centre back partnership selection? Tragic, <laughs> tragic. I, I don't understand how we've come into a new season and there has been such advancements in young centre halves, especially Brad Hills. And there, I, I know Cordoba was, was struggling with fitness and what have you, but the fact that we are still starting Grant Hanley when we signed him in 2017 and he is still the first option centre-half. Duffy, albeit, has done well in some games in pre-season. He did look impressive, but it's just it, it's shocking that the fact that this is still what we're having to deal with and that the, there's been not much to address that issue. Um, it is unfortunate Cadova was injured. I would have loved to have seen him straight into the team. And I think it's harsh on Brad Hills to have not played. I know he's only played in League Two and there could be an imminent loan move to, to Peterborough United coming for him. But it's 
crazy that we are playing two centre halves that are not fit for this system and Hanley just deciding to fall on the floor on a little hand in the back and then making an absolute donkey of himself before Harris then breaks through and scores, which I thought Gunn should have saved. It was right at him, at his legs. He should be saving that, but he's a professional goalkeeper and I'm not. So who am I to judge? Uh, but either, yeah, the team section was very odd. Of course, there was a certain omission, which I'm sure we'll talk about in great detail. But yeah, for me, that was... Um, no, the team selection wasn't it wasn't nice. No, I think exactly like you said, to have Hills on the bench watching that. I think if you'd have started Hills and he had have made a mistake like Hanley did, you'd have probably put it down to nerves uh, and inexperience. And you'd probably say, Oh, you know, brush yourself off, move on to the next week. But the fact that it is Hanley who literally his job is to be a slab head at the back and head balls away. And him and Duffy, early on, there was a few crosses that came in and they did nick them behind for a corner. And you kind of think, OK, well, you know, they might not be the quickest or the most technically gifted, but at least they can get their head on a ball and clear it. Um, and then Hanley just gets completely schooled. I Is he fit? Is, is even my question mark. Obviously, he went to the Euros. Obviously, I was at that Blackburn game when he did his Achilles um, all the way back, you know, April last year. I, I don't think he's fit. And I think there's obviously a reason why we have forked out three to four million pounds on a centre back is because there is an area of concern that needs repairing. Obviously, people are talking about is this Hanley's Russell Martin moment. Um, you, you really can't see him um, starting another game. The fact that he got hooked so early on in the second half as well, he was furious to be taken off. But like, <laughs> can, can you can you blame Toro? Like, it was yeah. And I, I, like I, I I said before, I would have liked um, one with a more youthful centre-back and then one with kind of more experience. I don't think Duffy had a particularly great game either. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I'd really like to see Cordoba when he's fit. Um, obviously, I don't know how long that's going to be. Um, I think against the Cup, in, in well, Stevenage in the Cup, I'd like to see two young centre-backs playing. Um, but, yeah... I doubt that we'll see Hanley and Duffy start as a back two again this season. And if we do, um, then we firmly know that we're in trouble. Certainly. Certainly in, in big, big trouble. Uh, as you mentioned there about Hanley's reaction when he came off, of course, he's naturally going to be very frustrated. It's probably that his emotions in the moment getting the best of him. But you can't blame Torp for taking him off because he had a shocking game. But that's not to say that he was the only one. No, no one stepped up apart from forcing a manqua pretty much. And he was making his debut. So you expect him to want to make an impression off the bench, probably as he was sat there watching what was going on and probably thinking, Christ, what have I got myself into? But who knows? I mean, it's it, as I said in the live stream yesterday, a lot. It's going to take its time. There, It's never going to just work straight away and we're going to blitz Oxford 5-6-0 and then we just go on this crazy unbeaten run. That's just not how football works. That's simply just never going to happen. You, you aren't going to get this free-flowing, fast-paced possession and attacking football straight away. You need to integrate all of the players as well that you want to bring in and the existing squad. You have to hope that they do it well and they do it well every single game. Otherwise, the manager's in great danger of losing his job because it comes across as his fault. But it's going to be a very interesting period now to see what goes on over the next few weeks and maybe how we react to that. You would think Stevenage is the perfect opportunity, a home game against lower league opposition that we should be comfortable against, even if we put out a mixed team. Don't don't you laugh at me, Jack. Don't, don't you laugh just yet. But... 
you would believe that that would be the easiest way for Norwich to bounce back from arguably a, a humiliating defeat or you can well given the stature of the two clubs of yesterday's game you could force that narrative but as I even said in the live stream yesterday I'd love to get your your two thoughts on this as well given that of course watching Norwich and how it's been the last two seasons and how dire it's been a majority of times a lot of outlets were calling it a shock result with Oxford beating Norwich but given how we know what can happen is it really that shocking because I didn't think it was um, I think the manner of performance and result was kind of shocking. Um, to be fair, they could easily have made it even three or four, I feel, at times as well. So I think in terms of how Norwich didn't turn up, um, I actually do think as well, a lot of it, I think, is fueled what I've seen, especially um, over the last few weeks, really, is that I think the media are so keen and intrigued about Johannes Hoff four up and what you can do. And I think they're kind of playing on the narrative that like they were so surprised it went so badly, if that makes sense. So that's kind of my interpretation of that. Um I think it's an upset. I think most people would, would have, have, have expected us to win, um, maybe draw. But yeah, but to lose in, in that result and manner, um, especially as we touched on earlier, Hanley, your captain, um, making such make such a poor error of judgment. Um, but but then again, you could also counteract that Hanley moment and think, I reckon about 95, like, like, like 95 times out of 10 last season, um, he gets a foul there. So then again, maybe that's a, a defence for Hanley, but... Yeah, you can't really um, be um, annoyed at, at Norwich fans or criticising you when, obviously, your captain has played so poorly. Um, so, yeah, that's my interpretation of it. Um, I just think when your captain makes such a big error, it just sets the tone um, for the uh, for, for the game ahead, really. Obviously, that there, there was more factors to the game against Oxford, which I'm sure we'll touch on. But, yeah, I think it's a bit of a shock result. But... Um, I do see why the media would kind of put it like that, like that. But as I keep saying throughout the whole pre-season and, and probably even now more so is there's so much problems to, to answer with Norwich right now. In terms of it being shocking, the more I think about Will's 12th place prediction, the more I think it's probably 13th or 14th. Um, I mean, after a summer of watching Gareth Southgate's England, where they have about two shots on target, in a game and then I was coming into this thinking ah oh, yes the mighty yellows are back you know Josh Sargent for her sides we've been talking them up it's gonna be you know a bloodbath against league one defenders did we have two shots on target yeah I, I think Forson had that one shot very late on and then Stacey no won. actually was there just one <laughs> I can't yeah even- but I can't even remember. No, Borja Sainz had one where the ball was given to him and it was blocked. So that's not a shot on target. Okay, uh, yeah. um, the fact of the matter is, I was watching this game and Oxford go- Oxford's goalkeeper looked really shaky. I don't know if you'd agree, Will, but at times I swear he put a goal kick out for a throw in. Um, there was a couple of times where he was just quite loose on the ball. And I was thinking to myself all these times, like... If we get Signs or Sergeant on the ball, you know, and actually in the box and have a good chance, he, you know, we're going to have a field day against him. But the fact is, he got a clean sheet. Um, we just looked really lost. We looked like we didn't have an identity. And I echo what a lot of fans have said, is that it doesn't look like we've had a pre-season either. It's it's. Really, the opposite of what I've always, always, always been saying, which is don't read too much into preseason, and I'm I'm fully reading into it now. The amount of tinkering and the amount of changes in the team, um, I don't think at the moment we really know what's best. I don't want to talk about Fastnax um, after my previous um, praises for him. I, 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 I'm happy to take that back, absolutely, because I think he went completely um, missing. There was a, a point in the game where he tried to tuck into midfield and tried to do something clever, um, except it, it wasn't really that clever at all. Um, I, I think Will, Gib- Will Gibbs, Liam Gibbs played. Um, 
I, I don't remember him touching the ball at all, really. Uh, if I'm being if I'm being completely fair, Freddie, who's on the back of your shirt? Less said about that, the better. Freddie, who's on the back of your shirt? No, no, no. no, 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 no let's, let's continue. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we have to give credit to Oxford. Like, really, they were really well coached, really good with their press, really organised. Obviously, got a lot of sort of new players coming in, um, but they looked on it. They didn't look world beating. I don't think they're going to do an Ipswich, unfortunately. But that was a really, really, really positive performance for them. And I think looking at a player like uh, Cameron Brannigan in that midfield who ran the show, pulled all the strings, uh, and I'm kind of thinking, you know, Gibbsy, if, if, if you want to progress, that's, you know, those are the levels that you want to get to. Um, but there were points in the second half, Will, I'm sure you can attest for this, where the atmosphere was awful. It was so quiet at times. Like Oxford, they've just gone up for the first time in 26 years to the championship. They're 2-0 up against, you know, a, a big championship club. And they just sat there like a library. What, what, was, your, what was your take on that? Yeah, I was definitely surprised about the volume of noise. Um, they had a few spells where they like ramped it up, but it was but by no means consistent. Um, I thought actually across the whole board, I thought Norwich fans were pretty good up until probably the second goal. I thought we were really good and, and spurred the team on. Um, yeah, mate, there were so, so many points to consider as well. I mean, you, you touched on the goalkeeper there. Um, that that was his first championship game at, like, at this level as well. So that's kind of like like things you want to kind of like take like take into the game and try and test him um and what i said to freddie um during thursday video uh yeah on the Thursday video i said that i think notch would be undercut on the ball um and they'll miss sarah's um kind of role and status with it like like within the team and that showcase absolutely perfectly against um oxford there was just no one who was willing i don't think apart from false and i probably say um towards the second half, that that received the ball and then wanted to play forward. Um, it was just so pedestrian so and just littered with errors all the time. It was poor to watch. Um, I don't I don't think the personnel helped of the defence to actually bring those players, in, like, to actually bring those players into play in, in midfield. Um, I thought Doyle was OK. He was solid. Um, I think he, I think he could have done more, but um, I think for me, you need you need better personnel who actually want to play the ball forward there to actually, like, get on the ball. Um I don't think Liam Gibbs is the player uh, right now. I just think he's trying to find himself again after quite a tough season. So I think it's quite hard to really um, forge too much blame onto him. Um, I know I've never been a huge fan of Fastnet. I, I I just don't I just don't know what he offers whatsoever. Um, but but what I will say actually in his defence is that the man's played about ten minutes of preseason as well, so he's not going to be fit whatsoever. Um, I was kind of shocked to not see Abu Kamara play. Um, uh, obviously, with all the messaging we've, we've been drip fed um, throughout pre-season, really, is that he wants to get the young, the, the young players in, like integrated. Um, I just think with with the lack of them actually like playing and in the starting eleven right now, um, I just think the main interpretation to make out of that is um, he, he doesn't deem them ready, which is quite sad and unfortunate. Um, so that might mean we might have to piss, like persist with experience. But um, I guarantee you, I think if Abu Kamara goes back to Portsmouth, I reckon. It, to be like a, like a very very good player for this level, so I think I was very very surprised to, to not see Abu Kamara there. Um, I think he would have like caused more threat, um, especially when when Norwich are so passive right now on the ball and just so sluggish at times. So I think what what we needed, and I and I actually said this to Freddie on Thursday, we needed a bit of board to science magic or or Jonathan Rowe if it would have been to to really like like take this team forward and and bring the team forward, but instead. Um, Border size couldn't live up to that, and this is not me saying this is Border Science's fault. But I think what I think what is good to realise now is is that with Rowe going, oh, well, well, probably like well, well now he's probably will going to go. Um, Sergeant and Eda seem to look 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 uncertain as they're already gone. Science now got to recognise to himself that he that he's got to be the man to like bring the team forward. Look, I know he's still so young, and there's still so much for him to, for him for him to improve on, but there's got to be someone now. 
like within this team to, to take responsibility because right now the attacking options, I just don't know if any of them actually want to be here. Um, this isn't just um, Ida or Rowe. This is um, Sergeant. I uh, even Sergeant. I thought Sergeant was so quiet yesterday. Um, I think we're so used to Sergeant. Like during last season, we're so used to him coming deep and just and just and just giving us something from deep to, to like hold try and hold us the ball. But yesterday he was just up there on his own, just so isolated. Um, yes, there was no service. I understand it. I, I do understand that. But at times you just got to come deep and just give and just give your team something because there was no link there between it, like defence and attack. And the irony of, of when I would actually look more threatening was with um, direct long balls, and that is just not and that just isn't how how he wants to play. So it's just so confusing right now. Uh, I mean, a player I touched on. Um, if Abu Kamara's watching that today and he's looking at the fact that, well, if if Roe was playing, he wouldn't have played. Um, and then obviously now we saw Fassett play today in, um, no, yesterday to replace Roe. So he's probably now thinking, oh, well, I'm now third choice here. So should I actually go, like, like leave Norwich? Because there's there's literally just, I just don't know if it's like a puff of him from anymore. And um, it's just quite worrying, really. It just, there's just so much uncertainty, and that attacking line, it just, it just feels like it's just going to get absolutely picked to shreds, and we need more signers. But the thing is, do we actually have the cash to do so? Even if we do sell Rowan, etc., for so much money, I mean, we'll see. Um, I think it will be a, a different team come end of August, but wow, we've got some quite hard games coming up as well. Um, albeit Blackburn looked good against on Friday night. Um, I definitely do think they're there for, for the taking. Um, no, it's be easy, but then you've got Sheffield United at home and then Coventry away. That's quite a tough start um, at this level. So I'm, I'm a bit apprehensive about how we're going to start um, the season. But yeah, man, there's so much problems right now. Um, but what I want to do stress as well, um, I was I was very angry after the game. Um, but for me, I just find it so hard to to try and say like, like level-headed at like the long-term picture. When like that present was just so bad today. Um, I think what we've got to do like across the season is just strike a balance of criticizing the present whilst keeping an eye on the long term future because we all know that you don't see Hanley and Duffy as like his major centre half in the future. So that's that's what we've got to take from it. But it's just so hard to try and keep balance to, um right now because it's just a lot of things which which anger you. Um obviously some more so than others, but yeah. Deep breath, Will. I'm okay. Son, son, please take over. Yeah, well, I think we you do need to stay level-headed. Um, I think that is what everyone should do. I think it's very harsh, um, some of the responses that I, I've been seeing. Into, it's the first game of the season. Norwich have got 45 games. They've got months upon months to put not just this result right, but put every other internal issue right. They have the rest of the month for the transfer window. They'll have another one in January, albeit that is but even still, that's four months away. There is so much that can still happen. Like for all we know, we that could be one loss for up until that point. It's just I think it is everyone needs to stay level headed here. It's very unfair to get on a manager's back when when you've had one game. Yes, pre-season was poor as well. They, we only won one game and that was against lower ranked opposition. And funnily enough, the only game against lower ranked opposition. But there's still so much that can occur. There is a lot of football to still be played. There, there could anything can happen. The players can leave. Players can join. They could be successes. They could be awful. There's there's so much stuff that we can't control. And there is a long time for the ones that can to put everything right. But there's, well, as you mentioned there, Will, there's players you don't know if they want to be here. Someone who evidently I don't think wants to be here anymore is a player who I think everyone would have expected that wanted to be here after we were the ones who gave him his first proper academy taste of football. We were the ones who gave him his first taste of senior football, gave him his first season in senior football and he did very well and now once he gets a transfer bid from Marseille he's thrown his toys out the pram and he's and he doesn't want to play for us anymore and he's off and Jonathan Rowe that is a stinking attitude it is an awful awful attitude this is something where I can't stay level-headed about it I think this is a d disgraceful on his on his part I really am um, it, it genuinely it's got me 
seething really actually the fact in which he's managed this and how he's gone about it because there was interest in him last season but it wasn't after five games or in January he said to Wagner I'll see you later mate all this interest that I can't I can't play it hurts my head too much I can't go out and play now it just that is and to do it 20 minutes 20 minutes before a team meeting that's not a coincidence that isn't just a oh oh I've forgotten to tell him. Oh, I need to go tell him now because I've, I've just completely forgotten to tell him. 20 minutes before the meeting. This, honestly, sorry for my language. It's a fucking disgrace. Genuinely, it's disgraceful. It, it's absolutely embarrassing on his part. I can't believe that a player who this club has given so much to, he's ready to just spit it back in their face. I really just... I don't understand it. I, I can't understand why you would do that. But loyalty in football is a rarity. It's it's ridiculous that he's he was just so ready to sack it all off and go and be Mason Greenwood's backup. You know, it's, I, oh, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But I'd love, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. But I just I can't believe it. I'm really really disgusted by it. I don't know where to start, Freddie. Um, I I really, really did not expect it from from, from Johnny. Um, obviously, he's a player that's come through our academy as well, so it's very hard to kind of um, be level head about this. Uh, I completely understand where you're coming from as well, and I don't want to kind of justify it in any way. Um, it's just such a sad situation because he's so, so well-loved here. It, on, like, everyone loves him. Um, it feels like now if you go around and ask, like, like all the children that, that support Norwich, they'll go that their favourite player is Johnny from Rowe. And um and even myself, it is it's Johnny Rowe myself as well. Um so it's just so sad how it's um been handled. Um I think it's been handled poorly. Um I am I'm just trying to get in, in Rowe's head right now and try and think of why he would. Um maybe he obviously he said that he wasn't in the right in, in the right mindset to play. Um I do get how that is. Um, I do get how that is can be hard for a young player to deal with at times, but it's not like there's nothing too concrete. Um, I mean, believe me if I'm wrong, but is but is it just um, like like one bit has just been put on the table yet? So like nothing is even like advanced yet as well. So that makes it very very worrying. Um, I mean, I just I just thought with, with, with Jonathan Rowe, um, he would look to do is talking on the pitch really and not off the pitch. Unfortunately. Um, if this is to achieve a message that um, he doesn't want to be here, then, well, I guess he's achieved that all right. But in terms of reputation, it's kind of gone down, it's kind of gone down a, a little bit now, I think, as well. And I think, especially if he actually like wants to go to Leeds as well, by, by, by all of his as well, then a relationship with, which was so strong could just deteriorate so quickly if he just decides to go to Leeds, I think, even more. So, yeah, I'm... I'm and to be fair, when um, I heard that it wasn't even, even in the eleven or on a match day squad yesterday, I was shocked. Um, I don't know if, if if it was some sort of injury or anything at first, but considering it, it was due to transfer speculation, um, yeah, it very upset me. I can't lie. I'm going to tell you a real story. Um, sit down, children. Uh, I was headhunted for my generic, boring office job. Um, by another company. Um, I was obviously negotiating with them uh, while still in my current job. That didn't mean that I just stayed at home and sat on my sofa and watched Loose Women whilst I was negotiating another contract with another company. In the end, my current job, uh, we, we sorted it. We sorted it. Um, but I don't know, just Football logic is is quite uh, silly, really. Will, you obviously said, is this a message to say that he doesn't want to stay? If I look at his social media, there's lots of really happy pictures of him in pre-season, uh, in the third kit, looking kind of really happy and chipper. And throughout last season as well, gave, you know, really good kind of media appearances and came across as very humble and very kind of seemingly loyal to the club. We're obviously not in a very good negotiating position in the sense that he's in his last year of his contract. So we can't 
be asking for huge fees. Um, my question in, in my head, which I think I know the answer to, is, is there any way back, right? Is there a solution to this or was his decision to knock on Torop's door and say, sorry, mate, I'm a bit frazzled. Was that the point at which his Norwich contract was essentially null and void? I mean, he must have known that when he was about to make that decision. I don't know how much of it is his agents kind of tinkering and kind of getting involved. Um, there might even be a magical scenario where he actually doesn't leave, signs a new contract and, you know, makes a huge social media song and dance about how loyal he is to us and obviously makes an eight year contract. That there is probably a 0.5% likelihood of that happening. I mean, even at this point, if Marseille don't reach Norwich's valuation, then what? Like, does he just does he just get exiled to the under 23s like a, you know, a Matt Jarvis? Um, he he's he's our most influential player at the club at the moment. Obviously, Sarah has just gone. Do you reckon maybe that had some say in it The you know, the Sarah transfer was a backward step and maybe he's not um, happy with the trajectory, but. If you're not happy with the trajectory of the club, you could always just stay and influence it and, you know, have a really good season. I mean, obviously, injury hampered him, but he wasn't really, it wasn't sensational from him. It it was good, right? It was a A minus B plus season. If it was an A star season, then maybe you'd understand it. But, yeah, I felt exactly the same when I looked at the squad and it was like, oh, OK, he's not starting, but I'm sure he's on the bench. Oh, he's not on the bench. Oh, OK. OK, that's fine. I literally felt like I'd been punched several times. Um, and I mean, again, like we're, we're all kind of very angry about how this has gone down. Let's think about this as like a not very amicable transfer away let's think about how sarah did it you know he didn't strop and throw his toys at the pram and um disown and, and disappoint all the rest of his teammates um he just kind of got on a jet and sat in a shirt um, and apparently he's back at colney today picking up all of his stuff which is quite cute but um uh, I can't imagine Johnny's there to, to say goodbye to him. He's probably um, probably in Marseille somewhere admiring the velodrome. Um, maybe maybe he's good at cycling. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, it, 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 I think it's now got to the situation where if, if they vaguely meet the valuation, I think we should accept it. Again, Adam Eder... It's a great example. I know we shouldn't keep mentioning him, but we do. And I will. He, I think, according to reports, has had a deal agreed with Celtic and was on the bench. Obviously played on the wing when he came on, which is um, hilariously frustrating. Um, but again, was a, a clearly, a, you know, a good personality and again, didn't let his teammates down. Um, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation. It is, um, it, it's really difficult to see where the route back for Johnny is. I would much rather he just went to Marseille rather than Leeds. If he went to Leeds, um, uh, I would, yeah, I, I don't know what I would do. I would do, <laughs> I'm, I'm not putting my neck on the line and saying I'm doing anything diabolical, but that would be, um, a really rogue decision. Yeah. No, it'd be awful if he went to leave, really. Uh, that would be quite the sucker punch to one we've already had in this just moment of madness, really. And that's the thing. You would, I don't know if that maybe affected other players' uh, mindsets during the performance and if that was 
something which played on their mind and maybe hindered them because you know that's just such a big thing to happen and the timing of it as well as i said a few minutes ago that can't be a coincidence to do it that late i just it's just ridiculous and you, that will have probably have affected the players that's right before a team meeting and then you go into that and the first thing you hear is oh you know that guy who, you, your teammate was really good last year and bailed you out a couple of times yeah he's not playing anymore good luck here's your team best of luck lads out you go Let, let's play this that's a huge mental barrier to overcome right before a game but and then, of course, the game goes the way it did and Norwich are lacklustre. The forward line doesn't do much. And the only thing we can sort of clutch at straw at is that Force and Amankwa looked OK when it, after coming on. And, you know, but that's if that's all you can gain from your first game of the season where you would like to think you're going to set the tone maybe for what you go out and achieve to do, it's not very good but again as I, as I said there's 45 other games to worry about and that's where you put wrongs right and you show a reaction to that And but if you don't go and do that then you're probably not going to be very successful it's going to, it's a long old season uh, and hopefully we can put it right very soon against what is tough, tough opposition really but but then, Jack, you went back on how um, Gabriel Sarah didn't throw his toys out of the pram and remained calm and didn't go into the manager's office when a, when a bid is accepted. And you, you go back and think of academy lads especially. I mentioned these in the live stream as well. Ben Godfrey and Max Aarons and Jamal Lewis, they never once threw their toys out of the pram. They got their head down and played every single week. We're in the starting eleven, and they gave it everything they could in the games. So I don't understand why Jonathan Rowe has gone a different pathway with that because there's people which he would have been around in a professional environment and he was probably looking up to when they were breaking through into the first team and playing, probably hoping that it would be him one day. Now he's in that position. He's not taken the professional mindset. And you mentioned about his social media, all happy go Larry and he's so happy to be here, all glory to God and all that sort of stuff. But that's just that's so easy for players to make it a facade but there is every player or how many times you heard a player regardless of club go oh i'm so happy to be here i really like it here i love living in norwich it's really fun i like roy's of roxham i really like the the beast and bump it's lovely the coastline is beautiful and then a week later you see them holding well, you see them holding a different team shirt and then they're going, oh, I've dreamed of coming here. They're such a big club. I, I love this. I love this club now. I, they're brilliant. I'm going to give everything to this club. It's, it's You never truly properly get that just based off social media stuff and the odd interview where they're trained to say they love it here. Literally, they, they go through it at like 15 years old to learn to give the most basic of response you hear regardless of what happens. But... I just don't understand why Rowe can't take the same attitude that we've seen academy players have who have gone on to be sold anyway. And then they get they get their heads down and just and gun for it. I'll be very intrigued to see if Rowe does put out any sort of reaction online somewhere and does um, sort of back up his actions. But something tells me we're not going to see that whatsoever. Did you guys see that he liked the club's tweets? Uh, from the Oxford game. Obviously, there was a post about saying, oh, not the most ideal game, but we move on. Obviously, there was a post about uh, Gabe Forsyth getting his debut. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that uh, later. And Johnny Rowe liked them both. You can see it on Instagram. So clearly, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so clearly, whilst he's, you know, sat at home or on a train from Oxford to Norwich, um, trying to book a flight to France, he's on the Instagram. Like, <laughs> is that just trolling? I, d I don't know. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, no, I don't know where this goes, really. Can I uh, just add something? Go on. Um, sorry, mate, to disturb you, but I just wanted to say, I think the way that Forup has actually handled it has been brilliant. Um, with the Ida situation and now the, the the Rose situation, I really like how he's putting his foot down, and um, it can be quite daunting for a new manager and quite like a like yeah like a new manager 
and imagine that, that hasn't had too much experience of this like in his prior um, experiences to, to kind of go about it differently but I think the way how he's put his foot down and, and dealt with it has been superb um, I like his mentality as well about making no play big, bigger than the club etc cetera, etc cetera. so I just want to say um, one and two for up for dealing with it like that um, I think that's the right, the, the right way to do it and um, yeah, very happy with that. Um, absolutely. I think he's done a very, very good job at doing so there because it, it could be quite easily um, get get tilted the other way and and it, and he's just playing just to kind of as he's as he's so good for us. So I think I think I think Fonte did, did a really good job there. Um, I do think he could actually come back as well. Um, which, mate, we saw with Ida. I think it was about this time last week. We saw with Ida. Um, how he how he didn't want to be in the first team squad, and then all of a sudden he was back next the following week. So I think it can get resolved, but the thing that but but the matter is right now is that there hasn't actually been a bid which, which meets Notch's valuation yet. So at, at, at the end of the day, like he's going to have to come back and showcase himself and prove himself again because and because otherwise um, it makes you look like a really really um, bad 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 person, especially for someone. With a club that like really admires you, so yeah, I definitely um, think that there is a chance back for him, but he's definitely got to show it, um, show it to to um, the fans, the players, and the managing staff as well. But um, I definitely, do, I definitely do, do not want to be John, uh, Jonathan Rowe um, this morning. Walk back into Coley and facing your teammates, um, that that could be quite a um, daunting experience for him. No, certainly could. It certainly could. Uh, but... Moving on from, from all of that and going in just quickly uh, to the debut of Gabe Forsyth. He was on a very, very youthful bench. Uh, there was only three players above the age of 21 on Norwich's bench yesterday, which instantly goes into the ideology of a Johannes Hoftor up team full of youth and trying to integrate them all. Uh, well, I said in the preview video we did, I wanted to see Forsyth start. Uh, he, he didn't, but he did go on to play and you remember Will's hot take from the last podcast that he thinks Forsyth will play five games for Norwich by the end of the season. Well, he's 20% of the way there already. So they, there you go. So what did you make of uh, the young Scott? And don't forget, this is actually a player who Norwich paid actual money for to get off of uh, Hamilton Academical in, in Scotland. So it's good, good to see him get a first run out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm absolutely over the moon for him, his family, and everyone that has been involved with, like with his career. Um, it's such a really big achievement for Gabe. Um, he's probably been here now for about 12 months, and the way he's kind of transgressed from an under 18s attacker to sorry <coughs> to a um, first team option is um, quite remarkable, really. Um, I just think the thing which Frop likes about him a lot is is that is he he's always thinking forwards. Um, he I, I never I, I've never seen Gay would want to play backwards and um I think I think for some players um that just comes natural to some players and I think him and Elliot Miles have always been in the academy, the ones that are so so good at, at doing so. Um we'll probably see Elliot Miles feature as well, I reckon soon. Maybe maybe Tuesday as well. So we'll see them. But yeah, I'm over the moon for Gabe. Um he's been one of the best players for, for under twenty ones last season. Um and the irony is, is that um, he was used as a left back for the majority of that campaign as well. So um, if that goes to show maybe Norwich has actually maybe got even more goal contributions for him as well. So yeah, ever so pleased for Gabe, um, a player that's going to going to have a big future for Norwich, and um, maybe sooner than I than I expected. Really, um, maybe I was thinking that Gabe might get some appearances towards um, like like the new year, but um, the fact that he's in so early just shows how much Farrop likes him, and I'm pretty sure it's all down to his forward thinking attitude and um, wanted to, and wanted to try and progress the ball forward at every at every given opportunity as well because um, his left foot is magic, it really is. So hopefully it's a foot of money for Gabe. Yeah, I, I turned the TV off um, <laughs> in the last five minutes, so I know he came on. I did, I don't know what he did, but credit to him, well done. Um, I'd quite like to see him start against Stevenage. Um, I'd probably like to see just all of the academy starting against Stevenage. I'm sure Will would agree. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, he, I'm, I'm going to ask this question again. Uh, where is Ken Abo? Why is he not on the bench? If if kind of Ed is on the bench and and he didn't even get a squad number. Are we, are we going to talk about 
the weird squad number anomalies um, that Brad Hill's got like 40 and he spoke earlier about Kamara um, clearly sort of thinking, oh good, it's my breakthrough season at Norwich. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, starting every game. I'm going to be brilliant. Hi, Johannes, what squad number have I got? 47. 47! 47 screams of, yeah, we don't really care. Uh, you can go off to Hull. Um, apparently they're prepping a bid, aren't they? Um, or they were, sorry, they were considering a bid. Um, yeah, I'm considering a, a bid to join the GB Olympic team uh, as well. Um, so we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, what was I even talking about? Forsyth, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, who who would you all like to see play against Stevenage? Well, I gave um well in the live stream I actually gave my predicted lineup. I'll just quickly touch on the squad numbers. Forsyth didn't have a squad number. He came on. Miles didn't have a squad number. Named in the lineup with a squad number. Kamara has been number forty-seven since he joined Norwich. And you know how players do like that little hashtag with their um initials and number. He's probably done that so he can have AK forty-seven. Uh, a player at Fulham did it. Um, I think it's Abubakar Kamara, I think his name yes, was. Yes. Yeah, he was. He literally took number 47 when he joined, so to have AK-47. So, oh, look at me. I've got a gun as my social media hashtag. Wow. Well, I've yeah. got one gun. We don't need another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right. No, but anyway, no. So, squad, don't, we haven't got to read into squad numbers. What was it? There's probably been some really obscure ones. I mean, I don't know why Gunn was number 28 when he was the starting goalkeeper for so long. That Jack Stacey is a number three annoys me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's not, it's not nice. But anyway, no, enough about squad numbers. But yeah, I gave a predicted lineup for Stevenage, so I'll go for it again. I would have uh, George Long in goal, and then I'd have a back four of Chrysene, Cordoba, Hills, Fisher, midfield three, Forsyth, McLean. Nunez, front three of Amankwa, Ida, if he's still here, and then I'd have signs on the left-hand side. Very strong. Very strong. Um, I, I, I'd just have the entire under-21 team. I think just just let them have a go. Like, they've got to be better than the rest of these other guys. Um, <laughs> Will, what about you? Yeah, um, I actually, would, I, I think I, I agree with Freddie's lineup um, because I think it's very important to strike a balance between um, game players, minutes, opportunities, but I also think it's really important as well because Norwich have got three home games coming up as well. I think so we've got Stevenage, Blackburn and Sheffield United. And um, I think it's very, very important for this new regime to kind of get like kickstarted like, with, like, with some actions because um, it's been quite a lot of... Um, unrest recently and that's and that's fair enough um as well as some excitement but yeah if i think i'd like to try and play Liam gibbs um in midfield um i think he needs the minutes as well to really get better and actually like feel the, the the position again because it's been so long so that is what i would look to do um definitely want to see kamara there as well um yeah um and hopefully some minutes for force and um as well so that's my kind of main like headlines for that um but yeah, it's going to be quite a interesting few weeks ahead. It certainly will. It certainly will. Uh, but from going on from long-winded takes and very strong opinions and a bit of a vulgar language, again, but apologies for that. But anyway, from the long-winded and sort of more serious ones to the typical every week, there's some nonsense because we, we always have to have a bit of fun and try and end on a positive note. So... Quick fire hot takes returns again with there only being three people, only two are going to give an answer. So maybe we can get away with uh, trying to drag it out a little bit, but I don't really think that's the point of, of why we do it every week. So Jack, you've gone from 10 to five, which I was a little bit upset to hear, but we'll, we'll go through it and we'll see what you've got for us this time around. And the first one technically of the new season. Oh, oh yeah. And I've actually gone for a season themed one. Uh, first one, who was your anti-man of the match against Oxford? Hanley. 
Oh, uh, sorry. It took me some time to um, think, to to figure that question. Then, uh, yeah, it's gonna be Hanley. Hmm. Which Norwich player outstayed their welcome the longest? Which player did we basically keep on for years who we should have sold um, much sooner? Oh wow, Russell Martin. Black Sands. Ooh! Yeah, mate, we could have oh. done a bit of money. Oh, yeah, true, true. Um, what is the most money you've spent on something in the club shop? Uh, I'm, I'm, I've got to think how much this was now. I've got to think how much the shirt and customisation was. Uh, <laughs> Can we please see the customisation, Freddie, please? No, right, so that was one, two, three, four, five pound. <laughs> Two numbers is another eight pound. So that takes it 55, add eight is 63. Sleeve patches was another five. So probably 68 quid, yeah, and it was it was this. Okay. It was, for me, it was the 2015-16 home kit. I think, yeah, I got Bradley Johnson on the back, I think, and um, he left the army that season, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Will. That's quite funny. Do you still have Whoa. it? I'm not supposed to laugh at our peers on this friendly channel. Do you still have the shirt? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, was it? Number four? Yeah. Can I also say, yeah, I cried my eyes out when he left on deadline day as well. I shed a tear. I shed a tear. I went uh, to Derby like, why, why would you go from Premier League to Championship? Because that was his ability. Oh, no. no next question. That's a, <laughs> that's a honking take. Go on, next Jack. question. <laughs> um, which Norwich player, past or present, and irrelevant of their age, would you be most happy to take your daughter to prom? Oh, uh, you know, I'd let Josh Sargent uh, take her. I think I think he'd give her a really lovely night. And he's, he's oh, having oh. gone through American prom, I'm, I'm sure he knows how to do well on the occasion. There you go, yeah. Zimbo, just a sound bloke, isn't he? Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Should should be fine. Should be fine. Um, and the final one. Um, what is the best farm shop in Norfolk? <laughs> well, you see, I'm I've never been to one, so I can't answer. What? I, I can't. I, I can't. I genuinely I can't answer your question. You have to give me a different one because I can't answer it. <laughs> All right. What is what is the best shop in Norfolk? Oh, that's a that's a really really good question. Um, I'll go with Primark by St Stephen's. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Do you know? Do you know? I I actually had a farm shop. You had a farm shop. Yeah, I actually had a farm shop for you. Okay, go on. There was this like makeshift farm shop near Sproulston. I. It used to open in the summer, but like it was never open like like in the winter. So it was this one in Sprouston, a Sprouston farm shop. I don't know the name, but it was but like it was near the Sprouston area. So that's what I can give you. The the correct answer is of course Goodies Farm Shop. So for any any people from South North South Norfolk, big up South Norfolk. Goodies. And what, and what I will say, can we all just can can we all just, like during like during these tough times support your local businesses because every because every every week they are there producing the goods so please support your locals thank you actually i thought of another one either goodies or the big strawberry that's on the a143 uh near the mcdonald's near beckles oh you, yes i know that one that's my you know favorite big strawberry. yeah no yeah i'm joking big up big big up big strawberry maybe they can sponsor us uh <laughs> The My Football Writer podcast, sponsored by the Big Strawberry. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry, that that that's your five. Um, no. That's your five. Um, yeah. Very quick fire as per. Thank you very much. No, no th thank you for that, and thank you for those who have watched or listened to this episode of the My Football Writer podcast. We're into double digits now. We're we're really, and the season has begun not in the way we would have wanted, but. 
hey ho, we never win on opening day anyway. Just ignore last season, but we haven't got the best of records. But anyway, uh, I hope you have enjoyed this episode and look forward to the next one this time next week on the My Football Writer YouTube channel or on our Spotify account. We'll leave a link to that and all of our other social media accounts in the description. I've been Freddie Humphrey Wakefield. They have been Jack Wright and Will Grant. We have been three men in the same striped shirt. And we will see you for the next video of ours here on the My Football Writer YouTube channel. It's goodbye for now, and we will see you then.